uh, we're very excited about this uh, this new book that we we're just releasing now, and it's basically a a script, if you will, to parents to have a discussion with their children about personal safety in the context of a broader discussion of all safety matters. Um, there's a, a stunning amount of research that shows that, that the, by far the most effective um, safety tool, the most effective way to keep children safe is by educating them about four simple points. And uh, study after study shows that, that the children that were even spoken to once with a, a, a minimal amount of parental follow-up are six to seven times more likely to exhibit defensive behaviors when uh, approached by a predator. And, um, you know, this is something that we've been, we've been working on for, for over two years now, uh, developing it, refining it. Uh, these discussions are best had in the context of uh, a, a relaxed, but focused discussion of parents with children. Uh, the research shows that if parents are too anxious when they speak to the children, uh, believe it or not, the kids uh, are so uh, disoriented and frightened by your nervousness that they tend to uh, just focus on you and not necessarily listen to the words that you're saying. So if you have too little, too little in the way of anxiety, they don't realize that it's something that's really important that they need to listen to. But if there's too much anxiety, it, it, it harms them. It, it harms the effectiveness of your message. So if you think of it as, let's say, 1 to 10, 2, 3 is a good place to be in terms of anxiety. Maybe even a 4, but not more. The purpose of this book was really to allow parents to have a script for the, the issues of personal space, of personal safety, of abuse prevention, which typically have been left out of these discussions that we've been having with our children. We've always had discussions about many of these safety matters, stay away from the stove, have a fire plan for your family, but this is really something that needs to be added to that discussion, and, and, and it's extraordinarily important that that, that discussion take place. Um, the four messages that children really need to basically uh, be aware of is no one's allowed to tell you to keep secrets from your parents. Um, your body belongs to you, the idea of personal space. Um, and the, the, that extends itself to the broader discussion of, of personal space. And research shows that even giving a child their own drawer is an effective step towards that, Give, teaching them that they need to knock when they go into somebody else's private space. Um, because what you really think about it, what you really want to do is you want to teach your children that their bodies are theirs. Um, and I always tell parents, why don't you think of it this way? Imagine if you went into the park and tried to separate a three-year-old from their candy or even a younger kid from their pacifier or, or a bottle. It's theirs. They understand at a very, very young age that things belong to them. They just don't think of themselves as belonging to them and that they have a right to speak up if somebody takes their privacy away from them. So th that whole notion, teach them first about the issue of personal space, and then explain to them good touching, bad touching, which is the third message. Um, that some touching is okay, touching in the playground, uh, you know, patting someone on the back, and then this touching that's inappropriate, one way of doing that is by teaching them that they're not allowed to be touched in an area that's covered by a bathing suit. And um, the, the important part is for parents, when you have this discussion, to be very specific and say, only mommy or, or tati or abba or ima, whatever, parents are allowed to touch you there only when they're bathing you. And grandparents, when mommy and tati aren't there, a doctor when he's doing an examination, and only when the parent is there. Be really specific, unfortunately, um, many of the predators, most predators are, are people that have children. We developed this over a period of two years. Um, and, you know, historically, Project S, uh, we, I started Project S uh, in 1997 together with, uh, at the guidance of and, and uh, under the leadership of the, the great Rabbi Maisha Shera Zechazali Kavacha with the encouragement of the Meyatzis Gedali Atayra and Agadis Yisrael to try to find solutions for the teens at risk problem. And, and, you know, a lot of the programs that we've done over the years, mentoring program, working with Rabbeim, uh, doing parenting classes and parenting uh, uh, mentoring, 
all was basically geared to avoid problems in the first place. And one of the things that kept popping up was uh, the issue of, of abuse. And, and uh, I, I just noticed over 10 years ago that almost all the hard, the very difficult cases that we were dealing with, with hardcore drug use and, and self-mutilation like cutting or, or other things of that nature, even with Manitzlan, God forbid, suicide at the hardest end, so many of those children were molested. And I began, um, you know, numbers don't lie, you can look it up, it's all on my website, which is rabbihorowitz.com. Um, I wrote over 10 years ago that I think thought molestation was the biggest reason that children were going off to derech. And as you can imagine, uh, it wasn't always received uh, with the credibility that it is. You have to get away from this whole mindset that the predator is a weirdo in a raincoat. Um, they're far more likely to be children, people that the children know. Um, and that's where the fourth message comes in, which is um, at any point in the continuum, when children get uncomfortable, they have a right to say, stop this. Stop the tape at any time. Um, because they, they're, you know, encourage parents to look up these terms and become more familiar with them so that you can better help your kids. But there's a concept called grooming, G-R-O-O-M-I-N-G, -O -O -I -I like to groom, you know, to groom oneself, that predators typically groom kids and start out with innocent type of behavior and sort of move along to see if they're going to get stopped. So the children need to be told that at some point in time, any point in time, when you're uncomfortable, you say, time out. I can say stop, and I have the right to say stop at any time. So these are basically the four messages that the children need to uh, get comfortable with about the issue of child safety, and parents should be following up on this. It's th This book is a springboard for healthy discussions that should take place all the time, all year long. Um, that doesn't mean you be neurotic and every time they leave the house uh, talk to them about safety. But the idea is that this is something that should be part of a healthy dialogue and children should feel empowered to say, stop, this doesn't fit. Okay. You're a guest at someone's Shabbos table and you just walk around and start popping food off people's plates. A four-year-old will look at you and say, hey, what are you doing? That look is enough to, to get predators away. It, think of it like a car alarm. It's not perfect. You can get around the car alarm. But if you see, if a if thief sees a blinking red light on a car, they're going to go to the next like car. Think of it like a spaceship and a space suit. Okay? A spaceship is a safe place. A safe place. So you think of your house as a spaceship. You know, the outside environment is hostile. Um, there are dangerous people outside, your house is a safe place. But what your kids also need is a space suit that's portable, that goes with them wherever they go. You can't follow them everywhere. And you don't want to make them neurotic or frightened to the point where they don't have healthy, normal interaction. They need a space suit and you can give it to them. It's very simple. Um, and w the more you learn about it, Shlomo Melech says, Ani bina li gvura. With wisdom comes power. With wisdom comes comfort. With wisdom comes a sense of, hey, I can do this. And you can. It's very, very simple. The fact of the matter is that years ago, we could have been lulled into this sense of, a full sense of security that we don't have to deal with these issues. But the reality is we have to deal with them all along. Dr. Tversky, Dr. my hero, Dr. Abraham Tversky, has been speaking about this for 35, 40 years now begging parents to, and, and community members to take this seriously. Whatever, it is what it is. We can't fix what's happened in the past, but we can start from today moving forward. Okay. As you can see, the book starts out with um, just general safety issues like putting on a helmet and crossing the street and um, not getting into cars when, when strangers are there or someone you don't know. And, you know, gradually goes to the issues of uh, abuse prevention, which are effective, which are personal space, uh, children getting accustomed to the notion of personal space. Um, this page basically says that you can have a great time with an adult. It could be someone you respect and love and, and, and is kind to you, but if they try to touch you in ways that make you uncomfortable, you could say no. And that's what we talked about, this continuum. This is an extraordinarily important message. 
Um, this goes back to something that may have happened a long time ago, and uh, that it's important to discuss this with your parents. And uh, if someone offers you treats and tells you not to tell things to your parents, you should go and tell them right away. And, and uh, this is really to encourage this dialogue between a child and his mother and a child and his father. Overall, you know, we feel that, that this is an extraordinarily effective tool for parents to engage with their children. And, and one of the things that, that is most important for parents is to, to get comfortable with the notion of really speaking to your child every day, listening to them. We always think about what we're going to tell our kids. You need to listen to them. And getting your children into the habit of talking to you every day is an extraordinarily important thing to do. Um, and listening to them. Um, I call it trial balloons. What children generally do is that they try to warn you when they get into trouble. And it could be as simple as standing up on the bus on the way home, uh, cheating uh, off a test, smoking. And what they do is they warn you and they give you messages that you just ignore. Like they say, you wouldn't believe what's going on in school. Or you wouldn't believe what's happening. That's a real warning sign. A much less extreme example of this is, did you ever get sent to the principal's office when you were, when you were a kid? And, you know, does that, what that means is your child was sent, somebody in the class did something wrong, uh, and they want to start a conversation. They're embarrassed to come up and just tell you, Ma, I cheated on a test. Or, Mommy, um, you know, some kids in my class are smoking and I tried one. They, they want to talk to you about it. They don't want a lecture from you. They don't want you to get angry at them. They don't want you to punish them. They just want to talk. So establishing this healthy dialogue where you can get into the practice of, of having open conversations with your children, that's probably the most effective thing that you can do in terms of abuse prevention. Because if a child is being groomed or a child is, is um, being approached by a predator, they, they, they would love to talk to you about it. If it's something that's happening over time, there's an unhealthy relationship developing. But you need to listen to them and, and acknowledge what they say seriously. We're thrilled that Art Scroll um, chose to, to publish the book, and we worked very closely with Rabbi Zlatowicz, Rabbi Sherman, and um, Gedalia Zlatowicz and Avram Biederman. Uh, we're very proud to partner with Art Scroll on this, and to, to the great credit of Art Scroll, uh, they, they enthusiastically. Um, ran with this project and, and the, the two editors, uh, the two owners, Rabbi Zlatowicz and Rabbi, Rabbi Sherman, spent a, an extraordinary amount of time crafting it, developing it in a way that's appropriate for Torah homes, where, where the message is one that is perfectly tzanua and, and, and proper, yet every single piece that's important was included here. Um, we're very honored to have uh, uh, the, the endorsement of Torah Messiah, Rabbi Nayowitz, and, and um, many of the, the our G'daylam Shlita personally reviewed this. Our chairman um, in Project S, um, Harry Skydell and Mark Karasek, have been extraordinarily uh, helpful in pushing our agenda forward um, and uh, supporting the work that we do. And this idea of branching off, as it were, into the issue of personal safety it is something that we started a number of years ago. Uh, already five, six years ago, we started giving classes to parents before sending the children off to camp in abuse prevention. Two years ago, we started doing webinars on the subject. Um, this year, we actually had a, a Karasik safety initiative, and, and Mark and Linda Karasik uh, dedicated in memory of their two mothers who passed away this past year and we developed an initiative where we actually went to six different communities and talked about personal safety. Uh, one of them, the clips is up, uh, it's on Vimeo, uh, you can get it on my website which is rabbiharowitz.com and um, that, that clip was watched by 8,000 people before the tragedy happened with Leiby and since then uh, it was seen by another 15,000 people or so. And, and, you know, it's up there. Have a look at it. Review it. Get comfortable with it. Become an educated consumer. Francisco de la Torre, uh, issued a call several years ago for parents to speak to their children about these issues in, in a Tsunua way. But, uh, look, it is what it is. Um, 
you might say it's a pity that we have to have these discussions. It is what it is. We have to deal. Some of the blame is probably well deserved, but if what we're going to do is is bicker with each other and talk about all the mistakes that we've made, and we've made mistakes in this issue, it's not going to help our children today. And you know, one of the things, one of the things that that um, there's a misunderstanding out there that that. Today's survivors of abuse, people who, who survived and, and uh, were abuse victims, that they want vengeance. They don't want that. They want to make sure it doesn't happen again. I've unfortunately um, had to speak to, counsel, advise, support hundreds of victims over the years. And I know what they want. I can't speak for all of them, but I know what the victims want. The victims want to make sure it doesn't happen anymore. And I, I think there is no greater... Uh, uh, comfort that we can bring to today's abuse victims to see that this becomes mainstream and it becomes something that's, that, that we all embrace and, and move forward to see that another Jewish child doesn't get molested. It's our sacred duty and obligation. It's our very first, the most important thing that you can do as a parent is to see to it that your children are safe. So, we, you know, again, I want to thank Tara Masara for supporting our efforts and Akudas Yisrael. Um, I want to thank the, the editors of um, of Art Scroll, Rabbi Zlatowicz, Rabbi Sherman, and, and most of all, I'd like to thank uh, Harry Skidell and Mark Karasik, our chairman, for for supporting this project and for moving it forward. And let's get it done. Let's finally get it done.